This is Junkyard Revival. There's so much hype behind it, and it's been so anticipated. This is our brand new hybrid mini, the HLR 75. This is Junkyard Revival. And saying they would challenge me and oh yeah, yeah, I bet. Well, everybody talks big behind a keyboard. But one person I would like to challenge is Nick McQueen. I've got a, uh, I've got a really good candidate for metal. Okay. If that's what you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna walk back there right now because we got this avalanche that we did bike trimmer yeah. on, and we always like to show like what it's like after 30 days, and it's right back by there. It's one of those aluminum panels yep. on the side of the Yeah, the, the corner. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Like, how did Rupes, being that it's uh, Italian company, how did they even get to the U.S.? Like, what started their process of? Was it just like they gained tr attraction? So it was 2011, I believe, was the first SEMA that Guido and Marco de Inca and maybe a few others brought over a prototype of the LHR 21 ES. That was like the, that was the one. That right was man. the one. Yeah. yeah, it was the first, the original one. It was designed 2009, 2010, and then brought over here to show on the biggest stage in the automotive world and a few people were wowed by it and word spread really really quickly through everyone at that show people got their hands on it uh, so at that time there was no rupes polishers in the nothing, united states no nothing not even anybody selling them nope and there was nothing in europe that was anything big orbit at the time up to that point you know for so what the time was 65 years or something leading up to that it was all sanders yeah small or you know standard orbit polishers was all that existed so this thing shocked the world on like i said the biggest stage in the automotive yeah. industry and it spread like wildfire we had one one employee in the u.s uh a year or two after that and then it's grown to what it is now in a relatively short amount of time, 10 and, years, basically. It's even, it's even crazier for people that now do, it. I mean, know about Rupes, that like to think that it was ever that. Yeah. Because it's so well known in the detailing industry. Yep. Forever, this is just me, I always thought that Rupes USA was Rupes. Right. You know what I mean? A lot because of people like in the United they, States think that. Well, because it's yeah. like, I've been to your facility a bunch of times, and it is, it seems as if everything's being made right there. Like, how did they get to that to where it's like, okay, you guys are gonna make them here, they just, that was their goal from the beginning? I think that was probably the goal. I mean, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I think that yeah. was probably the goal is to, uh, we saw, and, you know, Guido and everyone in Italy saw that there was a lot of opportunity here in the United States. So for a few years, there were a handful of distributors here that ordered containers of these tools and right. brought them over directly from, from Italy. Italy. Gotcha. So that happened and that went on for a few years. They grew and exploded really, really quickly. The home, home company saw that there's a lot of opportunity here, so we wanted to set up Rupus USA, gotcha. set up shop here. That's what I was meaning, like yeah. how did it get to the where it's like, now yeah. we got a I big freaking headquarters. There were enough people yeah. ordering. Enough people know, that was like interested in it. Yeah, to ordering know. load after load after load after load coming here that we needed yeah. to be able to better supply what they saw was a huge growth opportunity here. So Man, we- What a freaking good, uh, a good thing that they did because yeah, it's like man, pretty good move right because <laughs> yeah. now it's all the all the well tools. i mean outside looking in just because we're here united states i would never know of the main company yeah i always have always even before we sold rupes i looked at rupes usa and yeah. thought that's just this new company that yeah they're, they're these cool killed, buffers yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what yeah, i thought it's it's way more than that that's for sure yeah but i mean i was thinking that yours like the Rupes USA was like, this is where they're making it. It's the headquarters. Yeah. I didn't know the whole backstory, so it's kind of cool to the, the people do know. Yep. 
this is the freaking avalanche we did. So it looks good. It's pretty wild because- How dude, long ago was it? This was uh, 30 days now, probably 30 days ago. Yeah. But that's like all these, the comment that we always get is like, yeah, as soon as it rains, right. it's off. As to where it's dye infused, so it's not, yeah. a, it's not like a, a solvent-based product. You can see it's rained all night yeah. last night. There's no streaks or, that's always like the number one comment. People are like, yeah, it looks good until uh, it rains yeah. and you've got streaks all down your paint, but not with this product, with a, with a dressing. Uh, solvent based dressing yeah. it would but this is like a dye that yeah, looks great so we'll always they took our last one but we always come back and check it like we did this part too i mean it was like look gray yep. before <laughs> yeah the avalanches have have almost singularly supplied that <laughs> particular shit. chemical i know in the detailing industry <laughs> and when when we when we when we're out here looking for them i mean when we come out here that's what we're looking for is an avalanche because yep. they're oh, always yeah. like notoriously yep. horrible So a couple episodes ago, we'll flash back to it. We came out and did liquid carnauba on a John Deere lawnmower. It made the results that it did on it, dude, it was like jacked up. It made the before and after crazy. While we were doing it, we would we said we, this would be something we need to polish. So now that we have the ability and have the hybrid mini, this would be the perfect scenario to see. I want to tape off the section that we did and see how much of the imperfections and how much gloss we can get back out of this out of this tractor, the old John Deere Green, the 175. Yeah, the 175 Hydro. Hydro. You know it. You can see in the paint how bad it is. So I'll tape off this and do and use a product that we get a lot of questions about all the time is uh, swirl remover, how to remove light imperfections and swirls. That's one of the things about swirl remover that is a common misconception. People think is any scratches, anything they got, they just use swirl remover and it's gonna remove the scratches. There is some truth to it, but we always recommend swirl remover for light imperfections from your wash mitt, this, that, and the other. When you start getting into heavy scratching, if it looks like a Wolverine's been on there, you're gonna to need to use a three step uh, and actually cut it and then polish it. Not necessarily have to do all three steps, but a variation of a one to a three or a two to a three. But this is gonna show you what swirl remover does do. It will remove light imperfections in the paint from your wash mitt. Uh, it'll bring this paint back so much compared to what just the wax did. So let me tape it off and uh, I'll get to work. You ever thought about using masking tape for this? Yeah. What is it actually made for? I know. I've actually started with this <laughs> with this purple tape, so now it's like a thing. Now we use purple. This tape's cheap too. Yeah, real cheap. <laughs> 18 bucks a roll, something <laughs> like that. At some point Jerry's will be like, dude. Yeah. Cause it's got those three magical M's on it from St. Paul, Minnesota. Yeah. We're gonna go with the trusty wool, yellow wool pad. Arguably the most versatile pad in the Rupes lineup. If anybody argues, say, I'll argue them back. Yeah. The most versatile. The most versatile pad. Offers the best blend of cutting and good finishing on most paint. Yep. And one thing they teach you in the class at Rupes is a key part to um, polishing is priming of the pad. So, you put some on there. I do like this much. Okay. You've been to a class before. It's impressive. Then you always go down and hold it one spot just to get the prime, the pad primed. This will give you equal distribution on the pad, and then we'll kind of go at it here. We're gonna do both sides. This is the side we wax, this side has nothing. So. I can go high. Four, probably is good. Five yeah. might get a little messy. Shall probably add some more for that side. Yeah, it's gonna be thirsty. It's gonna suck up a lot of that.
so you can see on the side I'm going to take this tape off here this is just with the couple passes so you can tell a big difference um, obviously with swirl remover you would still go back over and wax it but this was just just the wax this was nothing so this is what this side looked like prior to and it has removed all those crazy contamination now there's still some stuff this looks like touch-up paint at some point maybe probably yeah um but that's what swirl remover do from just a pass with the yellow wool pad that's what that's what makes this tool i think so um there's so much hype behind it and it's been so anticipated is because how else would you ever do it I mean, how else would you get out here and do? You do it with I'm not a nano. Being a junkyard, you know, but I mean, you do just, it with a nano, and yeah. one or two inch pads is going to take substantially right. longer than what this thing will. So, like, you know, you got these guys. Um, we do off a lot of dealerships and stuff, and they do these. They have they come and doing dent removal, or they're doing touch up. Mm -hmm. um, this is going to be huge for them. What do you see probably being the most, um, like, responsive, like the most used? Well, I think it's definitely going to go into the detail world, uh, and I think you probably nailed it. People that are doing mobile work that really have a, a real, true need to have cordless stuff, yeah, they're going to latch onto it right away because that's where a lot of our nanos go now. Like you right. said, paintless dent removal. Anybody that's doing spot paint repair in a mobile setting, or anybody just doing mobile detailing, they're the ones that need the cordless stuff, so they they, they can get further and further away from needing to have a generator. Yeah. And the one thing that I've been most impressed about why, while using it is the power. Yeah. Um, which I watched the webinar and it said lost no power. And I was like, uh. Yeah, that's what, thinking, that's what we all thought too. Yeah, thinking, yeah, right. Yeah, like, okay. <laughs> so you're going electric, yeah. but you're still not losing any power. It's, and it's not. It's, it's got the same it power feels as like the corded. A, it feels just, like a powerhouse. It does. So you can see, I mean, that was just a couple passes. If you was really great. wanting to get real aggressive, you could do cut or, you know, um, a number of different yeah, compound polishes. Yeah, this side. Yeah. So if you're looking for some light imperfections and remove, this is to show you what it would do on heavy. So on light swirls, swirl remover is the product for you for sure. Mm -hmm.